uh, is a story. Family lore says that great grandpa Emil Jensen, age five, was above deck with brother Chris, age three, when they emigrated from Denmark. A big wave came over the ship and Chris was almost washed overboard, except that Emil grabbed him, prevented him from going overboard and saved his life. How could I corroborate that story? And then there's some names and some uh, I think I found them on the ship's manifest and the arriving and crew lists and things like that, but it's just a manifest. Is there any thoughts you could think? Could I at least find weather conditions as the ship crossed? So I think this is a really good, <clears throat> a really great example to keep in mind. And it's something that I think about when I'm doing research. All that we really have are is is a written record, right? We just we need to find a written record somewhere. So in this instance, who might have written down this ex this incident? And it mostly, just about the only ones that I can come up with would be the logbook of that vessel for that voyage or um, travel journals kept by anybody who was on board. And so if you know the name of that ship, did they... Um, uh Venetia. So let's just take a quick um quick look there and see what we find. I would also say uh one of the nice things about the this database is that it's the largest, I think it's the largest collection of um vessel names anywhere. So you can uh like I've had experiences where um I think it was uh Someone came up to me at a genealogy conference in England and said, you know, my ancestor sailed on the Suffolk Maid. And so I searched for Suffolk Maid and I didn't find it. But then I when I searched just just did Suffolk, then I found Maid of Suffolk or something like that. So there's it's a it's like an authority list for vessel names. It's certainly not perfect, but I think it's better than uh, the other things that you're going to find out there. So if we know that this was what information we know, we 1894. Uh, arriving, you could also look in the newspapers for that day because they might record. And this is a, a project that I'm I'm hoping to pursue. I would look at the New York Herald for um, the days after that arrival, and the New York Herald was the best resource for information about vessels coming into New York, better than the New York Times. They have the most information about. Um, about vessels arriving in the city. And perhaps there might be a, a vignette there about that uh, experience um, in, in the New York Herald. When I'm looking here at Venetia, um, most of these are, are, are naval vessels. Uh, Lloyd's War losses, History of the Royal Navy, British vessels lost at sea. Um, Wooden shipbuilding at Quebec. Uh, Ellis Island ship database. But even if this includes the, the mention that you, you, you're referring to there, there's probably not going to be any record of that there. South Atlantic Seaway, that's a possibility. An illustrated history of passenger lines and liners. Oh, no, from Europe to Brazil. Sorry, you have to read the whole thing. <laughs> um 1890, um, ah, North Atlantic Seaway. We were looking at South Atlantic Seaway. This is a different book, North Atlantic Seaway. Um, an illustrated history of the passenger services. Maybe there's a mention in there of that particular voyage. Uh, it's tough to know. Those are the ways that I would look and I would, I would look through all of these and I would copy and paste the ones that might be relevant. Clearly, some of these are not. And when you look at this, this, okay, obviously 1864 is, but we'll, uh, we'll find something a little bit later. Well, we'll just choose one of these. This is earlier than you want, but we can see that we can click on it and see what happens. And it, what it does is it takes us to Mystic, to this entry, um, and we can find um, Venetia here. Uh, um and it's not going to tell us much. Okay, so this one is out of Quebec, built in 1859. We don't know if that's the same vessel, but it could be. And so maybe that Charlie Mann book might actually be worth taking a look at. But this is how I would, uh, I think you'd have to 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 research it. It would be a, you know, I think it'd be tough to to do, but it's possible. 
So I see a couple of other questions. They're talking about specific events. And I think it's very similar to the question about um, the, the, the young children on board, where you probably need to find some record of the uh, of the event having happened and seeing it you know recorded somewhere and so it's a similar sort of search um and and i will say that one trick that you can use uh is to not be logged if you are particularly looking for um looking for log books or journals of a specific ship, that is the World Cat record. So it's also books by or about the ship. Um, then it's best to not actually be logged in because those subject headings are in the free database. And you know the subscription database is like 20 times the size of the free database. This is the only time, in my opinion, where using the free database is preferable to the to subscription database. But um, because they have such high value and because when I worked with WorldCat to, to agree to add those, um, I said I'd put them in the free database. It, it's really better to search for the search for them in the in the free database. I hope that makes sense.